Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus, who is still wearing his tinfoil hat. Um, several people have asked me how do I clean the inside of my computer out, so I thought I'd do a quick video on how to do this based on my years of experience of um, breaking computers. So, okay, first of all, if you live in anywhere, you're going to need to clean the inside of your computer out. Um, especially if it's like a super powered computer, it's got a good graphics card, it has a powerful processor. Over time, there are vents, there are fans, it has to circulate air because the enemy of electronics is heat, so your computer gets hot, it has cooling fans, it sucks dust in, it sucks pet hair in, uh, if you smoke, it sucks cigarette smoke in, and everything gets munged up. Then what happens is you'll find that one day you turn your computer on and it gets very, very noisy. Uh, so usually I clean all my computers out twice a year. It also makes a difference if you live in a place with central heating and cooling, forced air, then air is constantly circulating and usually there is a filter on your furnace, which means that's filtering dust out of the air to some extent. If you happen to live in an older place that has like uh, radiators in it, there's no air circulation, which means the problem is often worse because all the dust just settles on the surfaces, on the floors, and it's not really getting filtered out of the air. So if you live in a place with radiators, you especially need to clean the inside of your computer out. So, okay, what do you use to clean the inside of the computer out? Not water, that's bad. <laughs> Someone said that one to me, a friend of theirs said, yeah, rinse the computer out and let it dry in the sun. No, that's horrible. Like water is the enemy of electronics. Um, most people use one of these. It's a can of compressed air. Uh, I used to use these. I don't anymore because um, they are ridiculously expensive. It's like, I mean, this can was like 12 bucks. And you'll use like at least half a can to clean your computer once, and it's just ridiculously expensive. So if you have no other option, just grab, grab one of these compressed air cans and use that to blast all the dust out, as I'm going to show you. Um, but there are better options available. The next thing I tried was one of these, which is, let me get the cord out of the way, which is a DataVac electric duster. It's basically a reverse vacuum cleaner. It sucks air in the bottom, as you can see from the dusty filter, and it blows it out here. Um, I think I paid over a hundred dollars for this thing. It's made in the USA and I'm in Europe So that that might be why I'm not sure because this is the 230 volt model model um, These actually work very well, but they are extremely noisy and They're really expensive. So yeah, I thought this would be better um, It was it's better. It was cheaper than the the cans of compressed air that I was using because I was cleaning lots of computers out um, but for like a normal person with like one or two computers, like that's kind of expensive. It's effective, but it's expensive. So my preferred solution is a good old fashioned air compressor, which I happen to have carted one up here where you got this guy. And, um, if you have a workshop, if you most likely, you're probably going to have an air compressor to fill up you know, toys for the kids and, and, and your car tires and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you don't, like I say, get the can of compressed air, but I find that an air compressor is the best because I already got one and it's like unlimited compressed air. It's relatively inexpensive because um, I already had it. And there you go. So I usually take the computer, take it outside and use this guy. And for me, it's cheap, it's great, and it works well. So, okay, the first question is, we have a wonderful example of a computer here. And as you can see, we have the computer here and you'll notice there's like some dust there and stuff. And then on the side here, if it focuses, you can see that's an intake vent on the side. That's all clogged with, with dust and uh, pet hair, lots of dogs and kitties. Uh, and then, 
on the side here behind that vent is a is the the cpu the processor you can see there's there's dust there and then in the back you're going to have some dust on the intake vents so uh, you're going to need to clean everything out now the first thing to do is you're going to have a bunch of crap plugged in the back if you need to label every cord and where it goes like i um if it's a computer i'm not familiar with i've got little round uh adhesive stickers like red ones and yellow ones all different colors you just put a sticker here sticker on the cable yank it all out and that way when you're done you have to go and hook the computer back up again it's very simple uh if you accidentally put your usb keyboard and mouse in the wrong usb ports what you'll find is that when you start like say windows up again uh it's not going to find the keyboard and mouse right away and you're going to go oh no something's broken blah 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 so especially make sure that you get the mouse and the keyboard in the right place and obviously things like the screen because sometimes the motherboard has uh, a built-in port for the screen and you have a dedicated graphics card you want to remember which one you're plugging into so label if you have to when you're done unplug everything flip the power switch off if there is one unplug the power cord disconnect everything and preferably take it outside now when you get it outside you're going to have to get the side cover off this is the back of the computer usually this is the side of the case here's the front here's the back this is the side you're going to take off and in this case uh, sometimes there's thumb screws in the side sometimes you'll need a screwdriver in this particular case you actually have to take the top panel off and then the side one so i just undo these thumb screws slide this guy back and plop this over here and then this one lifts off like that obviously this is going to be different for whatever computer you have um, but generally speaking you just have to kind of poke around a little bit it's not going to be terribly difficult and you'll be able to figure it out now if we put our our overhead camera on here you can see there's the inside of the computer you can see down here with the fan that's the heat sink for the cpu fan uh, it's actually not that clogged but like any dust there's a case fan it's got dust on it and of course the, the power supply up here uh, that's a little that's a little iffy work so this is the inside of our case this is the front this is the back just so you know what's going on here uh, this is the hard drive this is your motherboard this is a dedicated graphics card the ram is down here and that as i said is the cpu with the cooling fan and up here is your power supply which you also don't want to forget to clean and stuck up in here is your optical drive and sometimes you have one of these card readers which is just mounted in here now basically what you're going to do is just spray all this stuff off that's it um, when you get to the fan here uh, anytime you have a fan what you want to do is actually hold the fan i'm going to get my air compressor here and it's going to be a little noisy and what you're going to do is you don't want to use like this this compressed air gun and then be spraying because what will happen is these fans are designed to operate at a certain rpm right if i if i just go like this and and start spraying not only does a lot of dust shoot off but that fan can actually spin at, at way faster than it's actually designed to spin for and you can you can ruin the bearings so what you want to do is hold the fan and spray same thing for the case fan in the back here and then what you're going to want to do uh, as you can see that's all nice and clean now there's our cpu and you can see the cooling fins below the fan it's nice and dust free that's what we want and that's the case fan that's also i held that sprayed it off nice and clean now so then what you're going to want to do is <clears throat> you're going to want to spray these side vents 
the front. Please wait. I have a portable air compressor here, and I'm afraid I have run out of juice. So let's. Now, what you're going to do is spray everywhere else. dusty and then the last thing this is why you do it outside the last thing you're going to do is we have the power supply there and some power supplies this power supply actually has a vent on the front sometimes there's a vent or a fan on the bottom so you want to spray in the vent and in and also in the back so let me do that real quick Also, if you have a graphics card, this one has just a passive heatsink. Sometimes there's a fan underneath here, so you want to hold that fan. Make sure you get all the dust off. And the last thing to do is you'll remember we've got this little dusty guy. Spray him off if necessary. Get a cloth, wipe the dust on the outside, and your vent is clean and you're done so that's pretty much it um the key points are use either a can of compressed air or an air blower vacuum cleaner like this guy which i'll put a link to down in the description if you really want to spend lots of money um, or just get the can of compressed air but the best option is if you got an air compressor use it and label everything disconnect take it outside and just blast the whole thing out with compressed air being sure that you hold fans when you blow the air because you don't want them to spin so fast that they destroy bearings. And when you're done, put the whole thing back together, reconnect all your cables, and you're all set for, oh, six months. One last note, these case fans like this, what very often happens is it's very dusty and you clean it off, and uh, Cletus can attest to this, you clean all the dust off and when you power it back up, this fan will start spinning and it will start making a, an awful racket. And that's because the dust, the bearings are going, and the dust was kind of keeping it balanced, so to speak. And when you clean all the dust off, um, especially these large case fans in the rear, they tend to start making grinding noises. So if that happens to you, don't panic. Don't think that you've destroyed something, because if you're shooting compressed air, and you can't ruin anything. So what you do is you open the case back up, and um, usually this fan will be spinning when the computer's on, and you can just kind of gently touch this. And when you touch the fan as it's spinning and slow it down, if the noise goes away, then you have to replace this case fan. Uh, that happens a lot. And it's not terribly complicated because, as I destroy my, my camera phone there, um, for these case fans, there's, there are four screws here. And what you do is you just measure the size of the fan. You can grab one on Amazon, local computer store, whatever. Um, the size of the fan is important, so you just undo these four screws, and there's a power connector inside. You undo, order the new fan, stick the sucker on there, put the four screws back in, connect it up again, and you're done. It's really, it's really not complicated, but that's probably the worst problem you're going to run into. Other than that, as I say, label, disconnect, take it outside, blast it out, you're done. And your computer will be much happier because it's going to run a lot cooler and a lot quieter. That's it. Uh, for more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.